Hi all, Mass Barncop from Kaiser Power Electronics here. Today we're taking a look at a old Danish oscilloscope. It is this one, which is of course a bit heavy since it is a tube-based oscilloscope. It is uh, from the Danish company Radiometer, and this is the model OSG42B. It is from around the 50s, so what I can judge from some model catalogs I have found online. But other than that, there's really no trace of these radiometer models from this age online. I only happen to find an auction where there are some photos of some other uh, measurement equipment from the same company. And now I'm going to put this down because it's quite heavy. But let's take a look inside. We are a bit up close and personal here. We have the main screen, we have the on-off button, we have a oscillator output, we have a intensity modulator, grounding, then we have a sweep generator, which can be off-triggered or recurrent. We have a sweep frequency, range and multiplier, and we have a sync selector that if you want to use the internal um, sync, external or line, and then the sync polarity. And we have that it's made by Radiometer Copenhagen type OSG 42B. It is number 50,546. I guess this is out of their total number of different apparatuses and not just this oscilloscope. Now on the top we have some attenuating inputs and we have also selector switches here. So it is a uh, Y and X input and we can also adjust the amplitude, balance, position and so on for the two X and Y inputs here. As we can see, it's marked X and Y and X. And we have intensity and focus dials here. Now, the guy that gave this to me said that he had tried to hook it up to 230 volt AC and it started to smoke. So um, I'm pretty sure that it's busted on the inside. But these nice old scopes are made to be serviced. So it does, of course, come out in one complete unit here. You can see there is some uh, splatter down here. So let's see where that came from. And this is an extraordinary unit, to say the least. Look at that. What a beautiful construction. That is absolutely marvelous. You don't see anything like that today. You have your mains transformer sitting down here shielded going all along the axis with the CRT that's just uh, beautiful and these input selectors wow nice all the strip lines wires tubes sitting everywhere so let's um, check the other side Oh wow, just as nice. But here we uh, can actually see the damage down here. That these capacitors, which says 20 microfarad at 450 volt DC, so that is the DC bus from the high voltage supply that has blown their content all over the place. This tube is completely drenched, all the components over here. So, um, with a bit of luck, I actually think we can change these mains capacitors and it, it will run. Ah, these seems to be brittle and missing some plastics as well. But other than that, not many electrolytic capacitors throughout this unit. Resistors seems fine, all the other capacitors. Tubes, no doubt they still work. Okay, we also have some uh, DC capacitors sitting here at 400 to 500 volt DC, so maybe I should change those as well. And what do we have here? Hunts. That's some kind of capacitor as well. One microfarad at 350 volt DC. So that is most likely some kind of metallized film. That will be all right. But the, those two cans and the other cans at the other side, those I'll need to change. Now the value of these old electrolytic capacitors is 2 times 20 microfarads at 450 volt DC. 
they are chassis grounded or chassis negative and then we have two positive leads up here so it's basically two parallel 20 microfarads capacitors in one can now these low capacity high voltage capacitors is not something that we have here in 2022 not unless especially ordered of course uh, because we simply have better technology today so i was lucky to find this in my uh, salvate boxes of capacitors that i have some uh, 33 microfarads 450 volt dc capacitors uh, I will have to do with a bit more capacitance, but certainly I could not install something like 100, 200, maybe 1000 microfarads that would simply overload the old transformer. It's simply not rated for that high load on the DC bus. So uh, I'll just have to solder these up with a common negative rail and then um, exchange these big ones and then let's see how it goes. Of course we uh, do need to do some soldering and for that a beer as well. So, cheers! The good old Jensen capacitors made in Denmark have been exchanged. So let's try to power it up. Maybe someday we will see capacitors manufactured in Denmark again, at the scale that this was. But uh, yeah, let's plug it in and see if it works now. So, let's turn it on. And of course it has to uh, warm up first. Oh, there we have it. What a nice small waving dot. Intensity at half. Maybe we need to adjust focus. So, yeah. There we have it. A nice small dot. The oscilloscope is working again. So now I just want to try to um, input a signal to it and see if we can yeah, get something that looks like a oscillogram. It is starting to smell nice and hot of that old electronics. Really nice uh, tube glow inside. And I'm using the um, triangle wave output here to the X and Y input. So it's just the same signal going in on both uh, X and Y channels. And that's why it's probably acting up a bit. But I can uh, get it to show something, which is uh, a whole lot better than not working at all. So yeah, now I have a uh, vintage oscilloscope that I have no idea what I'm going to use for, but at least it's a restored old Danish piece of equipment. So I thought it was worth saving. This is not like having a auto button on a digital storage oscilloscope, so I literally have no idea how I'm going to make this show it in the right direction, but probably going to look up how to use a XY oscilloscope. Thank you for watching this teardown, and as the outro on this video, I would just like to have these nice glowing tubes. So yeah, thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. Another piece of old equipment lives on. So until next time, see ya.